Blocking all my light, cause he's a fat little ham. You're blocking all my light, Morty. You're blocking it all. Hi there, Michelle here, also known as Fancy Dice for Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make this really cute tissue box. I am obsessed with these colors. About a month or two ago, has it really been that long? I made myself a really cute checkerboard crochet sweater, and I got to wear it a handful of times because now it is June and it is too hot to wear a sweater outside, and uh, yeah, my car air conditioning doesn't work. Anywho, I still have so much of this yarn left over because I thought I was gonna need more than I did. I didn't, and so now I'm just coming up with projects to use this yarn up. This color color combo. It's just so cute. It's just my favorite color combo right now. Like it's so adorable that like I would like to make everything out of this. This really cute box is actually super easy to make. It does require a little bit of math. And I'm not the best at math so I had to uh, recalculate this box several times to finally get it right. Again at the beginning of these tutorial videos I really like showing you what you're in for, what the finished product is gonna look like before you start this project. What you're gonna need for this project is two colors of yarn. Don't know the technical term for it but you're gonna need a needle for it that is going to fit your yarn but also fit through this plastic canvas. You're also going to need some elastic if you want some on the bottom and of course you're going to need the plastic canvas. This is the plastic canvas that I got from Walmart. Only going to need one piece. I did have some left over from my last year's project. I only needed to like use a little bit at the end so technically you probably could make two tissue boxes just out of one of these. Now just letting you know that these plastic canvases come in different mesh sizes. So I'm not talking about like the area because you can actually buy smaller like a smaller size. I'm talking about the actual grid within the plastic canvas. I did keep the tag from the one I got at Walmart. It is a 34 centimeter by 57 centimeter and it actually does say plastic canvas right here and there is a mesh count of seven and that means the size of the squares. When I first did this project last year when I made this guy I actually bought the wrong plastic canvas and I bought it at Michael's because I'm, like, I'm at Michael's they have it they don't have the right size they actually have a smaller size and my yarn and yarn needle would not fit through it because they were way too big so unless you're gonna go with a very 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 small yarn or you're gonna use embroidery floss you want to go with the bigger size so your yarn can go through it the smaller the count mesh so this is a seven the bigger the squares are gonna be. So a 14 count mesh is actually the smallest size you can get. The higher the number on the mesh count, the smaller the grid is gonna be. I'm using a seven, so I definitely suggest you buy a seven. I think the sizes are basically like seven, 10, and 14. 14 being the smallest and seven being the largest size. I feel like there's probably larger sizes than that, but this is the largest size that I actually saw at Walmart. The plastic canvas is probably the most important part of this whole project because it's what you're gonna be making your box out of. So that's definitely why I'm emphasizing to make sure you buy the right size. All right, so let's get right into this project. For this project, you're gonna wanna have your plastic canvas. This was about $4 and it is a mesh count of seven. Then you're gonna wanna have your two colors of choice. Colors that I am using are coral and light pink. Also, this is a 100% acrylic and it is a medium four weight yarn. This is definitely a very important part of the project. If your yarn is thicker than a medium four weight, it might not fit through the squares and if it is too small it's not going to give the same effect it might look a little see-through because the thread will be too thin to cover up all the plastic on the canvas so that is why I suggest using a medium four weight yarn and it can be any medium four weight yarn it doesn't have to be the brand craft smart it can be any yarn you choose it also can be cotton or wool or whatever you like as long as it is a medium four weight and both these yarns were about four dollars each you're also going to want to use a heavy duty metal needle. Now this needle here I think it might be either a leather needle or an embroidery needle. It's some type of needle but you're gonna want to have a needle that is small enough that will fit through the plastic canvas grid but also you're gonna want to make sure that the eye of the needle is big enough that you can thread your yarn through so that's very important. Also this needle I'm pretty sure was less than five dollars but I can't remember because it was a long time ago when I bought it. And of course you're gonna need a pair of scissors. These aren't any specialty scissors. 
They're just regular scissors. They're just to cut your plastic canvas as well as your yarn. So what I have to cut out is I have to cut out this piece. I have to cut out this piece. I have to cut out the top and then make sure there's a little slit for the, the tissues obviously to come out of. And then I have to do this and this. I'm not gonna do a bottom to this because it doesn't really make any sense to do a bottom for a tissue box. What I will be doing is similar to this where I'm putting elastics on the bottom and then that way it doesn't come out. Also, another thing is to be careful of what tissue box you're using. I am gonna give you the dimensions that I'm using. This is the Scotty's brand and it is a larger size tissue box where I had made one for my mom last year and I was using a smaller tissue box. The one that I had made her really only can put that one brand of tissue into that box. So that's another thing you just have to be careful about. So I'm gonna start cutting this into the pieces and then I will show you the dimensions and all that jazz and then we can get into actually making this all fancy. The first step is to cut out your pieces and making sure that your measurements are correct. So right here, I will show you the measurements that I use. For this project, you're gonna need to cut out five pieces. You're gonna need to cut out a piece for the top, two larger pieces for the sides, and two smaller pieces also for the sides. Here are the dimensions for the longer side pieces. I have them in inches and centimeters. I also have them in the number of the tiny, tiny squares you're gonna need to cut out. And I also have them in the measurements of how many of your larger squares that you're actually gonna make for your project. Here are the smaller squares. Again, I have the centimeters and inches, the number of tiny squares within this square, and of course, how many large squares you're gonna make in the piece. And here is the top. I have inches and the centimeters. Here are the number of little squares you're gonna need to cut out. And here are the number of total squares you're going to have. You're also going to be having to make some half squares on the top. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, and that is the middle piece that you're going to have to cut out. And this is where your tissues are going to come out in your box. I did 36, like 36 little squares across, and that actually cut into four of the squares, as you can see on the side. And I would recommend that you guys actually do 34 squares instead of the 36. That way you'll have perfectly lined up squares when you're done. I did not take that into account when I was making mine. So you can do it the same way I did, or you can do two less squares. For each of those styles, there are five squares missing in the center. So for this particular project, it's gonna be different than my other one because my other one, you went through like every single one of these little guys. So if your measurements were off a little bit, you know, if you made it too big or a little bit too small, you could get away with it. But because I'm doing squares, and for squares, instead of going in every single one, which you still can, I'm doing a diagonal. So when you're going on a diagonal, you gotta make sure that at the end, it all lines up. Because if it doesn't line up at the end, your project, I won't say is ruined, but you're gonna have to do some fixing up. For instance, here's a square that I've already done. And if you're looking at this, I didn't really calculate it right at the bottom. And that's okay. For my box, I wanted these squares to be eight by eight. In the end with my measurements, if I had done an extra square, the box would be way too big. But if I would have taken, say, this little strip out here, the box would have been way too small. And I'd rather make a bigger box than a smaller box. The plan is that I ended up just doing a little strip at the bottom. And I, it's a little cute detail. It's fine. So that's what I ended up doing. But another part of the measurements is that when I was first doing this, I was like counting like eight, eight, eight. But if you were to do that, there would be a gap in the middle and I'll, and I'll demonstrate why. That way you guys can, you know, see what's going on in my head. So then that way it's a nice seam as in like you don't see the little space in between. I want to show you this that I made. It's it's seen some better days because I used it a lot. But what I ended up doing, one, these are my um, dimensions that I used for the pieces. And then like this is a little dimension here of what I used to like cut out the middle part of this part here. I took the grid paper and what I did is I lined it up and with a marker because you're gonna be covering it up anyways. So I, if I got marker on this, it's fine. What I did is I dotted every single square. When I needed to cut it out, I would take a marker and I would just mark the line. And then that way I didn't have to count every single time. I could just line the one up with one 
and then go to where I needed to, and then I know that is where I needed to cut. So that made things a lot easier. Sometimes counting every single one of these squares is uh, a little annoying and sometimes you lose count. So I definitely suggest you make yourself one of these little pieces of paper. After further ado, let's get into cutting out the pieces. I'm making sure that it's inside the square, if that makes sense. When I'm cutting my pieces, I'm making sure that the last square is cut right on that edge. So I don't want this, okay? Cause I'm gonna have to cut up all those little tiny pieces. I want it to be nice and flat. So that is how long it is and that's the flat part. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut along that right on that edge there. All right, so now I have my piece and it's time to start making my little pattern. To start the project after you've cut out your piece, you're gonna wanna start off with your first color. Mine is gonna be this pink color. You're gonna wanna cut off a piece of the yarn. I cut a little bit longer than shorter, but I wouldn't have a really, really, really long piece just because you're gonna have to weave it through and the longer the piece, the longer it's gonna take you to weave through. But also you wanna have enough of it that you're not gonna have to keep cutting more pieces of yarn. All right, and you're gonna put it through your needle. I'm doing eight by eight. You can do how, whatever you would like. I'm gonna just show you my math. All right, so to start off, I'm gonna go into the bottom corner here and I'm actually working on the bottom. So when I'm working on it, I'm actually working down here. This is where I'm finishing off, but when I'm done, this is gonna be the top and this is gonna be the bottom. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna skip this. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. I'm actually gonna skip the very first square. You don't need to use this first square. To make the square, I'm going in a diagonal pattern. I'll go through the second one up, put my yarn through, pull that all the way through until you have just a little bit of a tail. You wanna make sure you have just enough so that when you're going through, you're not pulling it out, but also it's good so that way when you're done your project, you can tie all your ends together and I will show you that when we get there. I'm gonna go two to two and then I'll go like three to three, four to four, all the way up to eight to eight. So two to two. So I just went from two to two I'm gonna do three to three, four to four, five to five, six to six, seven to seven, and eight to eight. But that's the first half of the square. So that's what the first half of the square is gonna look like. So let's get that done first. Then what I'm gonna do is instead of going over and up, that's the way where you didn't have any of the yarn on the back side. I want yarn on the front and the back so it's thicker. Also the thickness of it will hide whatever logo or whatever Kleenex box you have inside of this when you're done. And, and that's, that's what I'm going for. I'm gonna go back to where I started. So back up here, but I'm gonna go to three and I'm gonna go down to three down here. And then again, instead of going over and up, I'm going back to where I started, back onto here into the fourth square now. And I'm gonna go through the fourth square through the fifth square, following that line down. So let's call this side A and this side B. So on side A, I'm gonna go through the sixth. On side B, I'm gonna go through the sixth one. Then through the seventh on side A, and then through the seventh on side B. And then one more time, eight on side A, and then eight on side B. So that's what it looks like on the good side and this is what it looks like on the back side. And so we have half our square right now. This is the longest line on the square and now we're gonna have to go back to like seven, seven, six, six, five, five. So now we're gonna follow this line and we're gonna follow this line. We're gonna go back up here and now we're gonna go, let's call this line C. So we're gonna insert into the second square from side A and pull through. And then we're gonna go diagonal. We're gonna go through the second one on side D. And then we're gonna go back up on side C and now it's gonna be the third one. And now we're gonna go to the third one on side D. Go back up here. We're gonna go to the fourth one on side C and the fourth one on side D. And we're gonna repeat this. And trust me, your yarn's gonna catch. It's, it's one of the little problems, but it's fine. And that is our first square. We don't go through the last one and we don't go through the first one. I just wanna show you guys something. These two are different. I don't know if you can kinda of see this one, kinda of see through it, whereas this one is a little bit more thicker. I guess this is thinner and this is thicker. And the reason why is the back. 
This way you probably will save a little bit more yarn, but I really like the way this looks because it looks the same, well, besides all this stuff, the front and the back and how nice and thick this is. There's no stitching on the back, whereas this there is, and I prefer to have the stitching on the back. This is your preference. You can do this way, you can do that way. This way, what you would do is you would go up, over, up, over, back, over, and like kind of like that, whereas this one, you're going to stitch it kind of like that if that makes any sense for y'all. I don't really like this look. I just really wanted to show you why I'm doing it the way I am. This is if you don't do it my way, and then this is what it looks like if you do it the same way that I'm doing it. Now what I like to do is I like to wrap my yarn around my project. The new yarn is gonna get mixed in with the first yarn. So again, you're gonna cut yourself a strand of your new color. I just wanna point out, if you have two of these needles, please use both of them. That way you don't have to keep taking your needle out of each color every single time you do it. Doing it multiple times ends up fraying this and then you gotta cut it shorter, shorter, shorter. So you're gonna lose a little yarn every time. Sometimes uh, putting yarn through these needles is a little bit of a hassle. So if you have two needles and you can keep them on each color, that's great. Now, another thing is, is that I cannot do one color at once. Would it be a lot easier if I could do the pink squares first? Absolutely, that would be fantastic. Unfortunately, I do not trust myself enough not to mess up. I know, I know I will mess up, that's the problem. I'm afraid that somewhere up here, I'm gonna forget where I'm putting it and I'm just gonna make a square and then by the time I get to my orange and do all my orange, I'm gonna realize my mistake and I'm gonna have to undo everything. If you are brave enough to do one color at a time, that's on you, you can go do that. I do not trust myself and although this will take a little bit longer to alternate the colors, in the end I think it's worth it because you're not gonna have that hassle of, you know, constantly thinking, am I doing this right? Am I gonna mess up? Oh no, I did mess up. I was not doing it right. It just makes sense for me to do one square of pink and then one square of orange. The next step is I'm gonna have to go into the next square. Now, what I wanna show you really quickly is the reason why my calculations were off the very first time I tried this is because I would end eight here and then I would start one and go to eight, etc. And what I was forgetting is that there's a line right here and that's gonna be visible if you do it that way. I'm just gonna do three. There is that plastic line in between the colors and you don't want that. You want them to be nice and flush against each other. There is no plastic line in between each color. So instead of doing eight and then another eight, what you're gonna have to do, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hi Morty. Oh Morty, so handsome sitting in that window. Blocking all my light, cause he's a fat little ham. You're blocking all my light, Morty. You're blocking it all. Again, we're gonna skip that very first square down here. We're gonna go in the second one. And then we're gonna go diagonal, back down into the second one across. So as you can see, we're going through the same square as the very last of the pink. Then we're gonna go back up again. These are the exact same steps. So you're gonna go three up, and then you're gonna go three down, four, and then four. So you're just lining them up until you have eight stitches. And what's great now is that on your second square, you're gonna know where to stop at the top a lot easier because you already have the first square to guide you. That we're on our eighth line of our orange color. Remember how we had missed this little square up here? We're actually gonna go and use that now. Now we have half our square, and now we're going to close that square back up. Now we have our two squares. I just unraveled my pink color, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drape it over the back of the orange, and then that way I can wrap up my orange on top of that pink color. So the reason why I do it like this, so that way the pink is underneath the orange, just quickly show you because I messed up the first time I did this and it was not fun untangling it. Okay, I'm moving on to pink, so I think I'm just gonna wrap up all my orange. And then when you move on to your pink, you're trapping all of your orange underneath that piece of yarn because this is gonna end up making a square and you're gonna have to go like this, okay? You're gonna have to pull it all through. So that is why I suggest you put your pink over top of your orange, then you wrap up the color you're not using on top of your new color. 
And then you're gonna do the exact same where you're gonna skip that first square, go into the second one, go into the second one. Again, you're just doing diagonal. You always go from side A to side B. Once you have your eight, you work your way back into the second point. Then once you get to the top, I'm gonna unravel the orange. I'm gonna drape it over the pink and now I'm going to wrap my pink up. So I have my first row of colors done. What I'm actually gonna do is on my way back, I'm going to do the opposite. Instead of going this way, I'm gonna be going this way. Now you can go the same way the entire time. I just chose not to, it was just a design element that I thought, you know what? It will give it a little bit more pizzazz. I thought it would look good. This is what I'm gonna do and this is what I'm gonna show you. I'm going to now move up and I'm gonna go back this way. Start my next color, but what I'm gonna do is instead of wrapping my orange this way at the moment, I'm gonna wrap it around here. That way it doesn't get caught in my new color. I'm actually gonna go from this side down. Go up two, again, we always skip that first one because it is not important and we don't need it. And then I'm gonna go down. Then I'm gonna go to the third one, up. And then I'm gonna go to the third one, down. We're gonna go four. And then we're gonna go four, five, five. And just continuing, doing the exact same steps that we were doing before. This project is really simple. Once you get the math right, that was the hard part, was finding out how big to make each one of my squares, and then how many squares do I put yarn through and all that jazz. But once you figure that out, it's just the same steps throughout the whole thing. So we have our first square of our second row done. I know that this yarn is not gonna be able to make another square. So I'm just going to cut a little bit off the end. I don't wanna cut it too short because I can like weave this in and I can tie it up when we're done. So never cut your tail too short to your project because it might just unravel itself. We're gonna go back to the next color. Now I'm gonna go through the second one into the second one. And it's repeating the process. Like this is it. There's nothing more than uh, just making a bunch of squares that are eight by eight. Just be careful with the uh, the color in the back. Sometimes I'll get myself like a hair clip or a pin or something and just clip that up. See, just to pull it out of the way. I'm gonna quickly show you what I do for the top here. Now again, I do wanna say that if you want your box to be a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, then you might not have to worry about the little lines here. You know, it's all up to you, but I'm just gonna show you what I did. Just like the square, I'm not gonna go into the first one. I'm gonna go two to two. And then I'm gonna cross over and do a diagonal. And then I'm gonna go three. So the very top, the very the very top one, and I'm gonna go down three. And then I'm just gonna keep doing three by three. One, two, three, that's what I mean by three by three. All these lines are gonna be a diagonal by three squares. And then I'm gonna do the two by two. And I'm not gonna do anything with that one. And that is the full square. So the very center I've already done, and I'll, I'll show you in a diagram of where to cut out the middle. This is where I like it. You could make it a little bit smaller. You can make it a little bit bigger. I probably should have made it smaller by one, so I could have had two full squares here. We're gonna go back and forth and back and forth. So what I did here is I did normal squares, and then I did a normal square, and then up here, because I cut out the little indent, I would say uh, maybe cut these out one more over, so then that way you could have two perfect squares. So what I did here is I just accounted for the ones that would be missed. So instead of going all the way over, I just went down one, but I kept these going into the same ones, just this was a little bit different. And then I did a bunch of half squares, and then the same as that, I just kind of went until I couldn't go into the end. So I wouldn't suggest you do what I did here and go over top of that. I would just end it and then work your way back and keep going through that. I'll show you a little demonstration of what I mean when you're going into the corner. So this might pertain to you, it might not, but I just want to show you how to get around like a little corner piece if you're missing some of the squares. All right, so say this is like the end of your square, right? So you're just going to continue doing the same like shape, but instead of going say through right here, we're just going to go down and do the squares that we can see. And then I'm gonna go over one, still creating that shape. 
yeah, so it's not a perfect square, but I just wanted to show you how to get around that. Now I can start assembling all my pieces. It's a nice checkerboard this way, but then when I say like attach these two together, I am going to have the same colors touching and that's what happens when you do a checkerboard pattern like this. It might not be a complete checkerboard because if you look at it, either it's going to be these are all going to be a checkerboard, like it's going to be orange, pink, orange. And then like when you do that, it's going to be orange, orange. Here's the thing though, is if you want these to be a different color, such as this one here, when you go back to here, all these are going to line up. I think I'm going to do the sides as a nice checkerboard pattern, have these match on top. Now it's time to attach all this together. How I'm gonna do this is I think it's best to attach all the pieces to the middle part and then I can stand them up and then attach them all on the sides. I can either connect them with one solid color across or I can alternate. I like how the orange looks. So I'm actually just gonna use orange and again, just like everything else, I'm gonna cut myself a piece. So I think before I attach them all, I probably should address all this. I'm just going to tie them in knots. I think you can weave some through to, this is the back side. I don't, doesn't really matter to me. And then I'm just going to cut all the ends. Okay, so making sure that I have the checkerboard going on here, I'm gonna fold it and I'm gonna go right into the two corners. So just like that, all I'm doing is I'm just lining them up going through one square on the one panel, one square on the other, and pulling through. It's just like that, line it up, pull it through. And just pull like a little snugly. So then that way, when you open it up, that's what it's gonna look like. I'm just gonna continue doing this all the way around here, and then I'll show you how I'm gonna connect the next piece on the side. So I'm just gonna keep going across. Now that I got to the end, that's what it's looking like. I think the orange looks quite nice. I'm going to put this one here. So the top of it are going to line up same color to same color, but the sides are going to be different. Sandwiching them together and with the same string that I still have from finishing here, I'm just going to move along that way. I'm going to go back into the same square right there. And I'm lining that up with my new square. And we'll pull through. Lining up the squares, and that's gonna line up at the end nicely. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for attaching squares. I'm gonna attach it this way, then I'm gonna attach this piece, and then I'm gonna attach this piece, and then when all the pieces are attached, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna attach all the sides together. And then once all the sides are together, I can do the finishing trim. But what I think I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna do the exact same thing of doing this but I'm going to do this center part and I'm actually gonna alternate the colors. I forgot, the one time I did this last year, I had built it all together and I forgot to do this part and it was just such a hassle trying to get my needle in while it was the box. I have not made one of these in like over a year, so I already forget what I'm doing. I'm gonna start off with the orange. I'm gonna go where the orange would be in this corner here. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna put my needle through this hole and then I'm gonna go into the next square. loop it through this and then I can go over here. This is the one part where I can do all of one color at once because I know where I'm putting the colors. What I did here is I just looped it through the little back of a stitch and then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna start another one. Go around all with the orange and then I'm gonna go around all with the pink. So how I'm connecting the sides together is the same way that I was connecting the top to the sides. I'm just doing the same little stitches. It's just lining the two pieces up and stitching it. All right, and then go right through the top pieces as well. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my needle through that again, and pull through here. And then inside it is a chaotic mess. And I'm just gonna tie that up into a knot. Every time I get to like an end, I'll also use that same yarn and do the bottom as well. So I went along all of it and I was thinking about doing a checkered pattern, but I kind of wanted to make it the same as the sides and the top, just to make it very cohesive. All I'm doing is I'm just going through each one of these little squares and just pulling through. So the same way that I was attaching all these pieces together, I am now doing the same technique, but only through 
one of the pieces. Now there is one more step that you can choose to do or you don't have to do, and that is to add some elastic into it. I don't know where my white elastic is. I have some black elastic. I'm gonna put two pieces of elastic, like one here and one here, and then that way, when I put my box in, I can like lift it open, and if the box doesn't fit perfectly in here, say if it's a little bit too small, it's not gonna fall out the bottom. Now I don't know what size elastic this is. It fits through my needle okay. I don't know what size it is. I bought it a long time ago. So my last one that I did, this one I actually put the elastic over top of like the bottom but because I had like this little thing you didn't see it but because this I don't have any trim on it maybe if I go through like the bottom I can be three okay, you're not really gonna see that on that side great great I'm gonna go through a few of these little stitches be safe I want to make sure that it's not too tight like this that it warps it in And I'm just gonna cut the extra. Make sure that your elastics aren't super, super tight because you're gonna have to be able to stretch them in order to get your box inside. And that is how to make one of these cute little boxes. I don't know how much more I have to explain about it because I showed you what it looked like in the intro and uh, throughout the video, if you've watched all of it, you saw the process of how to make it. This is a very, very simple project besides the whole math problem that I had with this, but uh, I just think this is so cute. It's just adorable. And that will do it for this video. If you like sewing, crafting, but mainly thrifting, why not subscribe? You can also follow me on my Instagram and my TikTok at Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party. I think that is it. So y'all have a good day now.